Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit two, differentiation, the definition and basic derivative rules. Today's focus is 2.8, which is the product rule. Enjoy. All right, welcome to 2.8, which is the focusing on the product rule for derivatives. So this is the product rule for derivatives. Um, leading up to this lesson, the last couple of lessons, we've learned a lot of derivative rules. We learned the power rule, we learned how to, that's to take the derivative of like a polynomial function. We used, uh, we, we learned the constant rule and the constant multiple rule and the sum and difference rules that really expanded our ability to take derivatives of things with more than one term or things with constants. And in the last lesson, we learned uh, rules for taking derivatives of sine and cosine, natural log of x and e to the x, logarithmic functions and functions like a to the x. So we are getting lots of rules along the way. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is how do you take the derivative of two functions that are being multiplied together? So the product rule is used for taking the derivative. So taking the derivative of functions multiplied together. Now we saw earlier uh, in the chapter that uh, sometimes we can rewrite functions in a way that allows us to still use our power rule, but sometimes you can't, right? Like if I'm looking at uh, even this problem right here, f of x is equal to 8x times sine of x, there's no way for me to combine 8x and sine x together. Those are just two different functions. Um, and so because of that, I, I can't use my power rule uh, in order to take that derivative. So what is the product rule? This is a huge one uh, in our things of things that you should be be memorizing. This is a huge one that you should know. What this is saying is we've got two functions, uh, what I'm going to call f of x and g of x. So f of x times g of x, they're being multiplied together. And the pr uh, product rule says this, the derivative of that is going to be f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. So Again, we're noticing if we take the derivative of two functions that are being multiplied, it's the derivative of the first thing times the original second uh, function plus the original first function times the derivative of the second. So that is uh, our product rule. That is the way that we have to take the derivative uh, of functions. Um, a common mistake if people forget the power rule is they just try to take the derivative of each part and then multiply those together. We cannot do that. That is not what the product rule states. That's not how derivative uh, rules work, unfortunately for us. So let's try this in this first problem that we've got. We've got one is equal to f of, uh, rather f of x is equal to 8x times sine of x. Here's how I'd approach this problem and here's how I'd think about it. I'm going to call the first function f of x. So the first function is uh, 8x and I'll call the second function sine of x. So 8x and sine of x. What we can see in this rule here is we're going to need the derivative of each of these, the f prime and the g prime. So I'm going to do that down here as sort of the side work. Derivative of 8x is 8, and the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So here's my side work. I'm going to sort of keep that aside. f prime of x using that product rule. It's going to be f prime first, so 8 times the derivative, uh, rather times g of x, which is sine of x, plus f of x, which is 8x, times g prime of x, so times cosine of x. So all together, this is going to be 8 sine x plus 8x cos x, and that would be our derivative for number 1. Let's try number two. g of x is equal to 2 e to the x times the square root of x. Try this with a different color. So in this case, my first function is 2 e to the x, and my second function is the square root of x, which I'm going to rewrite as x to the 1 half. The derivative of f of x is f prime, and the derivative of e to the x is itself, so that's just 2 e to the x. And the derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, so with my side work sort of done over here, 
we can go into uh, our product rule here. So g prime of x, the derivative of that, using our product rule, which we've got up here, uh, is going to be 2, so, so f prime, so 2 e to the x times g of x, so times x to the 1 half, plus 2 e to the x, my f of x, times g prime, so times 1 over 2 root x. Um, and so we can leave this, you know, we could leave this as is. This is uh, a fine way to, to write it. Uh, or we could combine things. We could say that this is equal to uh, 2e to the x times x times the square root of x uh, plus 2e to the x over 2 square root of x. So maybe those 2s cancel each other out. Right? We can cancel those and simplify that a little bit. Um, but that would be our function for g prime of x here. That would be our derivative function. Uh, for number three, uh, we can do the same idea, except I'm running a little bit of out, of out of room here. So let's try this, I guess, probably in a third color. Let's do this in green. Uh, f of x here is our first function. That's 1 over x plus 1. And my g of x is going to be 2x squared minus 5. So if I take f prime... Derivative of 1 over x, that's the same thing as x to the negative 1. So that's the same thing as x to the negative 1 power. So that's going to be uh, negative 1x to the negative 2. The derivative of 1 is going to be 0. That's going to go away since that's, that's a constant. And then g prime, the derivative of 2x squared is going to be 4x. The derivative of negative 5 is 0. So if we simplify, that's going to be what? Negative 1 over x squared. All right, so what's our h prime? So h prime of x is going to be the derivative of f first. So negative 1 over x squared times 2x squared minus 5 plus uh, 1 over x plus 1 times 4x. Now, again, we can go and we can simplify this probably a, a couple of different ways, but that's going to be essentially the setup of our product rule for that. Um, yeah, that's going to be our setup for the product rule. Uh, if you wanted to check, you know, you should be able to simplify this uh, to be something like 5 over x squared uh, plus 4x plus 2. If you wanted to go really far and you wanted to simplify that all the way. Uh, but since I don't have room, I'm going to just sort of leave that uh, as is. Um, next problem. So the table below shows values of two differentiable functions, f and g. Remember that word differentiable just means that you can take the derivative of it. So it's saying that there's these two functions, you can take the derivative of them. In fact, we have their values at some of these x values, as well as their derivatives. So this is a, a super, super common AP exam problem. This is, I can almost guarantee, I can guarantee it's going to be on the AP exam, where they're going to give you a table and they're going to ask you some questions about derivatives with respect to it. This is a great way for them to test your ability to, to do the product rule or what we'll learn in the next lesson, what's called the quotient rule. Um, so how do we do it? Well, in number four, they say h of x is equal to three times f of x times g of x. Find h prime of two. So first off, we notice it's a function times a function. We have to use our product rule here. So h prime of x is equal to 3 times f prime of x, and I'm going to put parentheses here, times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. That 3, because it's a constant, is staying on the outside. I put parentheses around this, this part because technically that 3 is going to need to distribute to both of these parts inside the parentheses. Um, but we're doing this when uh, x is 2. So h prime of 2 is equal to 3 times f prime of 2 times g of 2 plus f of 2 times g prime of 2. Conveniently for us, all of those values are here in this table, right? They're, they essentially gave us uh, these, these terms. Uh, when x is equal to 2, we've got all of those. So what do we have? h prime of 2 is equal to 3 times f prime of 2 appears to be negative 2. g of 2 appears to be negative 1 plus f of 2 appears to be 4, and then g prime of 2 appears to be 2. So this is equal to 3 times 2 plus 8, so 3 times 10, which would be 30. 
So the slope of the tangent line uh, when x is equal to 2 for this function, even though we don't know what f of x and g of x are, we are still able to apply the product rule in this problem to find the derivative when x is equal to 2. That's pretty cool and pretty powerful. Um, all right, let's try our number five, and this looks like our last one for today. Uh, so what do we have? We're finding r prime of negative five. So first off, let's find out what r prime of x is. It's gonna be the derivative of this first part. So the derivative of this first part is gonna be f prime of x over two. The derivative of two is gonna go away. And then that's times three minus g of x plus this f of x over two plus two times the derivative of negative g of x. Uh, the derivative of three is gonna go away. That's gonna be zero. And the derivative of negative g of x is gonna be negative g prime of x. So similarly, uh, we wanna plug in f a negative five for this. So that's gonna be f prime of negative five over two times three minus g of negative five plus f of negative five over two plus two times negative g prime of negative five. All right, similar to the previous one, we can find all of those values from looking at our table here when x is equal to negative five. So we're gonna just do that and plug in. All right, so using our values in the table, we can see here that r prime of negative five, uh, if we do this, f prime of negative five is gonna be four. So we have four over two times three minus g of negative five. g of negative five is negative two plus f of negative five. f of negative five is three. That's being divided by two and then adding two. And then negative g prime of negative five. g prime of uh, negative five is five. So I've got a negative five here. If we simplify, this is gonna be two times five plus three over two plus uh, two. So that's gonna be uh, seven over two times five. And so this is gonna be 10 plus Mm, actually, let's step back. This is, we've got a, a negative five here. We don't wanna lose that negative. So this is seven over two times negative five. And so this is gonna be 10 plus negative 35 over two, or 10 minus 35 over two, which is gonna give me a negative 7.5 as my answer for this problem. That's it for today. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Using the product rule allowed us to do some cool problems. Definitely a big rule, and definitely uh, we've got some practice here for you to try. Try that out. Check your answers. Come to class or office hours if you've got any questions about this, uh, and try out that mastery check. Have a great rest of your, of your day, and take care.